Beginning in the 1980s, Troma Studios has turned monstrous nature on its head, playing campy yet subversive eco-themes for laughs by showcasing comic eco-heroes instead of the tragic hero of most horror films. Troma's Toxic Avengers series from 1984, 1989, and 2000, and Class of Newcomb High and its sequels from 1986 through 2013, look at toxic waste dumping, energy overconsumption, and radiation poisoning from a more comic perspective than 1970s eco-horror movies like Soylent Green and Silent Running. In these films, rugged individualism is replaced with more communal approaches to solving ecological problems. But trauma films move beyond traditional comic horror films by exploiting, satirizing, and sometimes parroting historical and current events with help from the laugh-inducing annex of bumbling comic eco-heroes. In the Toxic Avenger and Class of Newcomb High films, toxic waste and radiation contamination disasters are played for both laughs and results. As comic eco-horror, the Toxic Avenger uses the negative repercussions of toxic waste for comic effect. To accentuate both its comedy and eco-message, the film's hero, Melvin, played by Mark Torgy, mutates into the Toxic Avenger, played by Mitch Cohen, after being humiliated by a clique of vicious jocks at the health club where he works as a custodian. The jocks not only terrorize Melvin the mop boy, they also gleefully seek out other victims in their souped up cars. They repeatedly run their car over a child on a bike and point a shotgun at a baby, for example. Ultimately, though, they chase Melvin through a health club window into a vat of toxic waste, and that changes him into a superhero. So the toxic Avenger's gory revenge seems just to heighten his moral standing, the Toxic Avenger saves those in distress, destroys corrupt politicians, and is rewarded with a beautiful blind girlfriend. The message here supports a community free of those who exploit the weak. The film's take on nature may seem less clear-cut because toxic waste, an environmental pollutant, causes Melvin's transformation into the Toxic Avenger and prompts the moral readjustment of Tromaville. Yet nature seems to fight back in the Toxic Avengers films, since exploited figure turned comic hero Melvin destroys the power hungry. The class of Newcomb High from 1986 argue, argues directly against leaving nuclear power plants unchecked by the EPA and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission in relation to the same Tromaville, New Jersey setting found in the Toxic Avenger. As in the Toxic Avenger, the opening establishes the toxic environment, both condemned and ridiculed by these trauma films. But this time, the film seems to respond to contemporaneous nuclear disasters, such as the 1979 Three Mile Island reactor meltdown in nearby Middletown, Pennsylvania. The film also brings to mind the 1986 Chernobyl explosion and the successful protests against the Shoreham nuclear power plant from 1979 and until a plan to decommission the plant was approved in 1989. Instead of taking a serious look at the dangers of nuclear power, as do the China Syndrome from 1979 and Silkwood from 1983, the class of Newcomb I plays eco-horror for laughs. School jock Warren, played by Gil Brenton, and his cheerleader girlfriend Chrissy, played by Janelle Brady, are transformed by toxic atomic marijuana into comic eco-heroes who are perhaps less bumbling than Toxy. Both the Toxic Avenger and the class of Newcomb High beg the question, what's so funny about environmental disasters? But they also point out a change of strategy. Laughing about the environment and its degradation may not only stimulate awareness, that laughter might also point out a path toward change. In spite of their sometimes overpowering campy humor and horrifying violence, these trauma films show the consequences of disturbing a pristine ecosystem and offer a viable solution to greedy humans' exploitation of the natural world. They may clearly be what Derek Armstrong calls horror comedies, but they may also serve as viable alternatives to the zero, serious eco-cinema of the 1970s and today, including cli-fi. This shift to eco-horror comedy occurs for at least three reasons. First of all, 
the genre has come of age and can now be satirized through comic versions like The Toxic Avenger and Class of Newcomb High. These films also exploit their cultural and historical contexts, making us laugh while also revealing everyday environmental disasters we need to address. These trauma films also reflect a movement from rugged individualism to a more communal approach to solving ecological problems, a change in the evolutionary narrative that reflects a movement from tragic to comic eco-heroes. This evolutionary change also aligns with anthropological theories of laughter's origins. Examining the Toxic Avenger and Class of Newcomb High movies in relation to theories gleaned from cultural studies, anthropology, and examination of the comic eco-hero may also demonstrate the positive results possible when a genre comes of age, a raised awareness of the disastrous consequences of environmental degradation.